Our next uh, speaker is uh, Professor Reza Dazo. Uh, Professor Reza Dazo is uh, my former boss. That's what I need to be. And he was the uh, immediate past associate uh, dean of the Department of Mechanical, uh, so it's our, our discipline, Mechanical and Robotic uh, Discipline, under the School of Aerospace, Mechanical and Detectoring. I think we call it School of Engineering because it's com uh, combined with other two engineering schools, mega schools. Uh, Professor Reza did Please. his bachelor's and master's and also PhD uh, in Iran, particularly from the Tehran Polytechnic Institute and thereafter from Sharif University. Sharif University did master's and, uh, and PhD uh, from, I think, Tehran Polytechnic University uh, bachelor's thesis. And then uh, he um, he moved to Canada and USA. He was uh, in many top uh, universities in, in the US and Canada. And finally, from Columbia University, Alamedi University, grabbed him for us. So we are actually headhunting him. His brother, Professor Reza, wanted to come to Australia. We wanted to come him to Australia. And uh, Professor Reza is an uh, editorial board member and also chief editor, was one of the uh, nonlinear. Journal and he was actually founding editor. So you understand how a Scopus Inject journal, where you want to make from scratch up to the top level, it is really hard work. And Professor Reza did that. Uh, in addition to that, he also has published a lot of books, and some of the things you'll be seeing very soon. I don't want to go into the detail of that. So, with this note, uh, he's a very accomplished uh, um, academic and a research scientist. So, Professor Reza, please. Better than that. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm looking for somewhere to attach something. I'll find it. Don't worry. Put it on it. The USB port. Done. No worry. No worry. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Firuz, for your introduction. That was fascinating. As I said, I couldn't even introduce myself better than that. Anyway, today I'm going to combine two topics in dynamics and vibration. Uh, complex dynamic system that I'm going to explain what that means. Secondly, vibration of automotive in suspension system design and so on. First, what is a complex dynamic system? Any dynamic system that has two separate differential equations and depends on physical situation, we have to follow this set of equations or the other set of equ equations. This type of dynamic system is called complex. Working with this mathematical modeling of that is not that easy because we need a mechanism to switch between them depending on the condition when we go there, when we go there, and when we jump from one set to the other set, we must carry the initial condition that we produce. So this type of system is very hard to work with. Secondly, I want to talk about vibration of automotive, means suspension. Basically, for any dynamic system that we are studying for 
vibration optimization, there are three types of input or response. Transient response, like we jump over a bump and then there is nothing else. So after a while, it is going to be quiet. That's transient response. Then we have a random input or random response. And then we have frequency response. Means we have excitation, frequency, periodic, usually harmonic. Harmonic means sine or cosine. 90% plus of optimization methods for suspension are based on frequency response analysis. So frequency response is the most important response associated to vibration of vehicle. Now there is a problem with frequency response. We assume that the tire is a stick to the ground. And when the ground is moving up and down, vibration goes to the vehicle, but tire cannot leave the ground. Means when it is supposed to separate it, the ground is holding the wheel and pull it down. This is the assumption in all of frequency response analysis, which can be wrong. Today I'm going to talk about separation possibility and how we handle this. Transit response, frequency response, and because after separation we go to separate set of differential equation, it is a complex uh, system, complex dynamic system. Before that, bear with me, I want to introduce myself. At the moment I am, as Professor Pius mentioned, I am working at RMIT University with my dearest colleague here. Also, I am associate professor in Xiamen University of Technology in Xiamen. Also, Ocean University in Xiamen, different university. Also, University of Waterloo in Canada, that I had the privilege to be a postdoc 20 years ago in Waterloo University. Uh, this is me last year in my class. Where I and here is when I was working in North Dakota State University. I had a uh, privilege to work with many universities, as you can see, Virginia Tech, Columbia University, Waterloo, and all of them are mentioned there. I skipped that. My research and my experimental uh, industrial work, all of them were in automotive engineering, stability, dynamic analysis, suspension optimization, and so forth. At the moment, these are topics that I'm working on. Drift is something that kept me busy for a while. Uh, maybe next chance I will talk about drift. But today, I'm going to show you something about drift. This is drift. Very hard topic to handle. And Maybe we'll talk about that later, but look at this person, how beautifully he's using the drift with the tractor. It's amazing to me. He doesn't know anything about dynamics, vehicle stability, but he's doing fantastic. This is another one, top view, you can see. So you got the idea about what is the drift. And here you can see It had sound, but right now sound is quiet. Anyway, this was last year in Kenya, Raleigh. And this is my student to study on drift in Melbourne, uh, some specific place. You can register and pay something, and then expert driver teach you how to drift. We equip the student with a lot of sensor to measure whatever happens there, to be able to find uh, some simulation, some mathematical equation to define drift. We couldn't. Anyway, we are working on it. This is another one, a uh, very interesting Russian soldier, probably, officer. He knows what he's doing with the car. It's amazing. And drift is not just on vehicle. It can be 
on motorcycle as well. This is Drift. Anyway, Drift kept me busy for a while and I'm working on that. Uh, let me show up by my publication. These are the books that I publish. And give it time. This one, the last one on the right, Beacon Vibration, is the first book ever that dedicated to vibration of beacon. It is coming in December this year. The advanced beacon dynamics here in the middle, 2019, is fantastic. There are a lot of new theories I put there. Out of these books, these two are very famous. Any university in the world is using one of these two or they are using a book of local. Uh, so it means these two books are dominant for teaching robotic and vehicle dynamics. In 2018, these two books were translated in Chinese, so at the moment Chinese universities are using this, and right now it is under translation to GER. So by end of this year, German publish of this, this book are going to be available. Well, I was lucky to work as an associate editor or editor-in-chief of some journals that you can see here. That one down on the right is the journal that uh, Professor Firuz mentioned. I established that from scratch, so uh, it's under my name, nonlinear engineer. Okay, back to the topic of complex dynamic system that I already mentioned what is the meaning of complex dynamic system. Jumping or separation from the road, as you can see here, or you can see here, is something that can happen. But you do not have any model. In the middle, you see that real experiment in US Army for measuring uh, separation from the room. And it is very old. At the moment, we have better um, measurement devices. But at the time, it means this is an old problem that uh, in industry or military, they were interested in studying. And today, I'm going to um, develop the equations of motion and study every aspect of that. So this is the model, the vehicle. On top, M mass is the body mass, and we have a wheel, and then we call it on a sprung mass on the bottom, sprung mass on top, and you see that it goes over a bump and separates from the road. Here you can see equipment to do experiments. Anyway, it has sound right now, you cannot hear the sound, but it doesn't have. We understand that it is possible to do everything experimentally. Uh, okay, back to the mathematical model. So, at this point, I'm starting with some mathematics. On the left, you see quarter car model. By quarter car model means we have a vehicle with four wheels, for example. We cut it longitudinally. We cut it laterally. One quarter is taken out. It has one wheel and one quarter of the body mass. On top, we call it MS sprung mass. One wheel is on a sprung mass. At the bottom, you see a stiffness of the tire between MU and MS. You see main spring, main shock, shock absorber. When the tire is not stiff to the ground, depending on the frequency and amplitude in the middle, in figure B, you see that tire can separate from the road. How do we find the equation of motion? Lagrange method or Newton method on the right hand side. It is free body diagram and we find the equation of motion. Sprung mass means the mass on top, it doesn't feel separation from the road. So the equation of motion of the sprung mass is always the same. On a sprung mass means the equation of motion of the wheel is different when it is in touch with the ground or separated. As you can see, there are two equations to express the motion of on a sprung mass. When it is in contact, or it is separated to different. What is the condition for separation? When we have a vehicle, the tire is going to have static deflection. So 
So when center of the wheel respect to the ground movement is more than static deflection, we have separation. When it is less than that, we are in touch. So that's the condition. So this equation here, uh, the second equation on the bottom, is when we have separation. And it is a free fall. It means vehicle is on air, falling down, and vibrating. And the last equation, you see G. That G shows that it is free fall. OK, you know that when you are working with the dynamic system, it is better to make it non-dimensionalized. So every vehicle in the world will follow the same result that we are going to find. These are what I use to make the equations of motion non-dimensionalized on the right-hand side. And I use static deflection as the key displacement point to make everything non-dimensionalized. That's why on the right-hand side, condition for separation is x u. x u is the center of the wheel displacement minus y. y is the displacement of the ground. Greater than 1 or less than 1 in contact or separation. Here at the bottom, we define something called S with heavy side function. That S is separation condition. I'm going to show you very shortly. So these are the set of equations. First set, second set, and I'm going to sew these two with that heavy side function very soon. First, let's do frequency response with the assumption that we have in touch contact. If that's true, then frequency response with harmonic balance will be found, and we can plot that. That's the frequency response with the assumption that we have in contact, road to tire contact. And you know that every vehicle has two main resonance frequency, one around 1 hertz, the other one around 10 hertz. 1 hertz depends on the body, 10 hertz depends on the wheel. So these two are resonance zones. Now let's go and discuss separation conditions. Let me introduce a new variable, x sub t, which is x of u minus the row displacement. x sub t is displacement of the tire. So when x sub t is more than, more than static deflection, we have separation. When it is less than that, we are in contact. Look at the black line in that curve. Black line. Black line, there is a line horizontally equal to 1. Wherever that black line touches 1, it means we have separation. Frequency response based on in touch is not acceptable. So everything is wrong after that point that I showed separation zone. We need another tool to study the right-hand side of that. Depends on some parameter, we may have separation in certain domain, and then in touch another certain domain, and then separation again. So all of them must be able to be uh, studied and contact uh, and modeled. Let me ignore that. So let me go to time response before to find frequency response. You know what is the time response again, two set of equations. And I'm going to move the vehicle over a bump. The bump was modeled by sine square. And I put some numbers associated to a normal vehicle. And this is what we have. Look at the blue line. Blue line is the ground. It is the bump. The black line is motion of the center of the wheel. The red one is motion of the body. And there is one dark blue, which is indicated by S, that's separation condition. There's a purple line, which shows displacement of the center of the wheel respect to the ground. And that S that shows a jump shows at what time we have separation. Look at the horizontal line. It is time domain. Depends on non-dimensionalization. So something around the two time unit, I get separation from the ground. OK, I have a tool to model separation. Now I can study different condition. What is different condition? Different velocity. Same bump. I'm going faster and faster and faster. 
first one on top left was what we have seen. The second one doesn't have any separation. Third one has a longer separation. And in fourth one, we have separation for very, very long time, as you can see. Okay? Now, I'm going to introduce a new variable by Z, which is exactly the motion at the bottom of the tire. And I'm going to study moving on a ramp, and the ramp is going to end means definitely with this type of excitation, I have separation. At the end of the ramp, there is no way to stick to the ground. It will jump, as you can see here. Okay? Now, look at the output here. The blue line was the road. At the beginning, you see blue and green are the same. What is the green? Green is the point bottom of the wheel. So when the tire is moving up on the ramp, it is a stick to the ground. So blue and green are the same. But a little after, right after the uh, ramp, you see that the green jumps down and then moves on a wavy shape. Why it is jumping down? Because after the ramp, static deflection will jump back instantly associated to our model. Then you see the black line, which is the center of the wheel, you see the red one, which is the displacement of the, uh, of the what? Sprung mass, and then you see S, separation condition. <laughs> Professor Firuz, give me another half an hour, I'm going to finish. <laughs> <laughs> now let's apply a harmonic displacement uh, to find the frequency response. This is what we get after applying a harmonic displacement, means bump after bump. And as you can see on the right hand side, it seems that something periodically happens. So it says that we are at steady state condition, but it is not true. Look at the red line. The red line says that we need more time to settle down. So we have to apply this harmonic excitation, give enough time for every variable to settle down at the steady state condition, read the maximum displacement for that frequency and change the velocity means change the frequency read them again and plot them that would be the frequency response of the system i wanted to talk about this possibility is it possible that vehicle jumps over one bump and sit on the other i showed here but i skipped the detail to go and talk about frequency response analysis. This is frequency response for nonlinear system. It means we have separation. And here I compared both of them together. The dashed line was what was assumed that we have no separation, which you can find it in many books, which is wrong. What is correct is the solid line that after separation, we have different frequency response. Now we have to apply one of those optimization method based on that solid law. And I'm done. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> now, we are uh, really, really exactly on time. So, if anyone has a very small or short question. Yes, please. Uh, there's a short question. Uh, Ask question first. You're, uh, you're talking about optimization. So, which optimization tool you are using for those uh, wise I didn't do optimization here. The question is, what did you do about optimization? I didn't do optimization. Here was just introducing a mathematical tool mathematical to model. study, to analyze. Later on, next step is optimization. Okay. It is not done. Uh, frequency response and harmonic response, do you have in mind uh, to introduce any optimization technique? Sure, to sure. I have my own technique. It is called RMS optimization method. You can find it in my we can dynamics book. Okay. Okay. So, thank you. I think we have to stop here. Thank you, Professor Linda. My pleasure, sir. Now we start with our last speaker. He is Professor Shomna Chattopadhyay. Professor Shomna Chattopadhyay. Uh, he is a professor and also now head of department of the mechanical engineering department. Uh, mechanical engineering department.
of IIT IIT Chandra, Indian Institute of Technology, or Indian School of Mines in Ramba, Jharkhand, India. And Professor Shambha Chakrabarta, he did his Bachelor of Technology, BTEC they call it, and also Master of Technology from Jadavpur University, and PhD from BIT Mishra. And 